How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I'm going to run you through three basic ways to wire up solar panels. Now I'm going to do an actual application where I'm trying to charge up that EcoFlow Delta Pro portable power station and get the most amount of power going into it using all three of these different methods. The first one is the easiest that's going to be wiring in series. Then we'll go into wiring in parallel and then we'll bring both of those together in a combination of series parallel wiring. Now this should help you when you're designing your own system whether you're doing an RV, an off-grid cabin, maybe an off-grid garage, you're just doing a portable power setup like this or you're doing your own house. So let's go ahead and jump into wiring in series and show you how easy it is but also where the limitations are. Now for any type of wiring you need to know the basic specifications for both the portable power station, maybe for you it's a charge controller or a string inverter, and your panels. In this case, we have an EcoFlow Delta Pro, and the solar input specs are a maximum of 1600 watts, but more specifically, the voltage operating range is from 11 volts to 150 volts, and the maximum current is 15 amps. And then our 360 watt panels by Helion have an open circuit voltage of 48.6 volts, and a short circuit current of 9.4 amps. So if we oversimplified this design, we would take four panels. So let's say these are our Helion 360 watt panels. And because each is 360 multiplied by four, that's gonna give us under our 1600 watts. So we should be able just to bring these together, right? Well, you'll see how that doesn't always work out. So you'd have a negative, wire coming out and then a positive. So we'd have a positive on each one of these. And we're just doing series. So that means from the first panel, we'll take positive into negative of the second panel. From the second panel, we'll take positive from the second panel into negative of the third panel and so on. And then we'll just have a positive lead coming off our fourth panel and a negative lead coming off our first panel. Now if you tried to bring these together and you plugged it into the Delta Pro, nothing would happen. You'd actually get no solar input, but if I actually tested across this, if I created an open circuit and I tested that circuit, you can see now our voltage coming from these four panels is well above our operating range, which had a max of 150 volts. So that is why the EcoFlow is not allowing that voltage to come in. So right now with our conditions, we're getting roughly 45 volts for each of these panels, just a little bit less as you saw on the multimeter and our current stays the same but that is going above our threshold value so if you're we only going to do series we would have to only do three panels in series to stay within our voltage so let's go ahead and wire that up and see how many watts we're getting into the ecoflow All right, so good news. Now we have input power coming in, right? We brought that voltage below the maximum 150 volts, and we can see we're getting almost 900 watts of input solar, which is pretty good. But now let's compare a parallel setup, and then at the end we'll combine both series and parallel to see how close can we get to the 1600 watts of maximum capability for this EcoFlow. So now for parallel, and in this case, parallel by itself does not make a ton of sense we're only gonna be able to bring in two different panels, and that's because now we're gonna be adding the currents. So we would be adding up our short circuit, so the maximum current of 9.4 amps, adding those together to get 18.8. Now that is gonna already be beyond the 15. We will still be able to get input power into the EcoFlow, unlike when we exceed the voltage, in series, when we exceed the 150 voltage, it will not accept that. In this case, it will accept it. It actually will be under it, and it will only pull a maximum of 15 amps. From a wiring perspective, 
we'll take our negative leads and we'll bring those together. So just know at these intersection points, you're now going to need additional hardware. Specifically here, we would have a combination connector, which is able to bring in both of these positives. So then we can connect up one of our cables going into the EcoFlow. So you'd need one for each positive and negative. And then we'll do the similar thing here. So this is going to be the most we're going to do. And again, we are now adding currents and we will maintain our voltage. So I'd expect voltage to be around the 44 to 45 volts, like we saw when we did the series for each of the panels. We will maintain that voltage and we now will add currents up. What I'm expecting is overall, especially from these two panels, we're going to get less power. But then we'll show how do we combine series and parallel to try to get over that almost 900 watts we originally saw on series. So now depending on what kind of connectors you have, you might want to get one of these little tools. It helps you make up these standard MC4 connectors, but they also have the two little teeth that release some of these connectors depending on what brand and type you have. You might need those or it's really hard to get these connectors to come apart without them. So now we'll go ahead and bring together our connectors that will help us combine the negatives and then the positives. And then we'll go ahead and plug in our extension cable and see what kind of power we're getting into the Delta Pro. So with two panels in parallel, we're at 555 or 560 watts. Now let's combine, let's combine series and parallel. Let's try to bring four panels together and see what we get the wattage up to. So now when we're doing series and parallel, it is just that, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. We have two panels up top in series. We see our positive connected to our negative, and then we have our two leads coming off that. We do the same thing on the bottom in series, and then we go ahead and combine those two. So I take my positives, I bring those in. Again, this will be a connector that needs to join those two together. And then I do the same thing over here for my negative side. In this case, we're going to add up our voltages, right? So we should be around 90 volts, maybe 85 volts, and then also add up our currents, hoping to get more power than we saw when we had those three panels in series, which with four panels, in this configuration, that would make sense, but let's see what we get. Now wiring things up, you can see pretty quickly when you do parallel, sometimes you're gonna to need to get additional wiring. You might have to make up some custom wires with some MC4. I have some additional combination connectors that have a little bit more of an extension. Now these are four panels coming into one, so I will have some open ends. This should never be left permanently outside because you'd have open ends open to the weather, you need caps on those, but temporarily it'll be fine. All right, so with the combination of series and parallel, bringing those together, we're getting 1145, almost 1150 watts. So getting closer to that 1600, but still a little bit away. So we are almost to 1150 watts, combining up the series and parallel, and then bringing that into the EcoFlow, getting a lot closer to that maximum capability of 1600 watts. So hopefully this has helped you out and given you an understanding of series, parallel, and then combining those into a series parallel wiring configuration. One big thing to note is if you are doing parallel, especially in a permanent type of configuration, make sure you research and size inline fuses to make sure you avoid any issues or damage in the future. Now remember there is a link down in the description if you are looking at solar for your home like I am. I will be putting on an 11 kilowatt system here soon and hiring that out. If you need some guidance and want some consultants that have been doing it for years and can really walk you through the process to help you get what you want now, today, to meet your energy needs, but also plan for the future, knowing in two, three, or even five years that the size system that you have on your house will still meet those needs and offset your energy bill. Currently, you'll just find a simple form. You'll fill a little bit of information on your overall house and what you're looking for, and then we'll reach out to you within 24 to 48 
48 hours to start the conversation. Now, one of the major things that you need to consider and we would do through the consulting call is what's called net metering. It's good to have a basic understanding and you can check out this video right here and we'll walk you through the complete understanding of net metering and how that might relate to sizing your system on your home. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.